Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're diving into a really interesting medium problem called lexicographically smallest string after applying operations. It sounds a bit complicated, but we'll break it down into simple steps. Let's get started. So here's the deal. We're given a string of numbers, like 5525. Five, five. We're also given two numbers, A and B. We can perform two special operations on the string as many times as we want. Our goal is to find the smallest possible string we can create. First off, what does lexicographically smallest even mean? It's just a fancy way of saying earliest in the dictionary. So if you compare two strings, you look at the first character where they're different. The string with the smaller character at that spot is the winner. Our mission is to find the absolute smallest string we can possibly form. Okay, let's look at our two moves. First, the add operation. We take the number A and add it to every digit at an odd position. So the second character, the fourth, and so on. If a digit goes past nine, it just wraps around back to zero. The second move is rotate. We take the last B characters of the string and move them to the front. Simple as that. Let's walk through the example from the problem. We start with 5525. Let's try rotating it by two spots. The 25 at the end moves to the front, giving us 2555. Five, five. Okay, that's already lexicographically smaller than our start. Now let's apply the add operation with A equals 9. The digits at odd indices are 5 and 5. If we add 9 to 5, we get 14, which wraps around to 4. So, our new string is 2454. We can keep applying this add operation, and eventually, we'll hit 2050. This seems pretty small. But how do we know for sure it's the smallest? The key phrase here is any number of times. This tells us we can keep applying these operations over and over. This creates a web of interconnected strings. You can think of each possible string as a location on a map, and the operations are the roads connecting them. Our job is to explore this entire map, to find the location with the smallest name. Now if we just start exploring this map randomly, we might end up going in circles. To do this systematically, we can use a breadth-first search, or BFS. We'll use a queue to keep track of all the new places we discover that we still need to visit. And crucially, we'll use a visited set to remember every place we've already been, so we don't waste time exploring it again. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java and C++ towards the end of the video. So here's our game plan. We'll start a queue and a visited set, both containing just our initial string. We'll also have a variable to keep track of the smallest string we've seen so far. Then, we'll loop as long as there are strings in our queue. In each step, We'll pull a string out, check if it's smaller than our current best, and then generate its two neighbors, one from the add operation, and one from the rotate operation. If we haven't seen these new strings before, we add them to our queue to be explored later. All right, here's the full Python code for that BFS approach. It might look a little dense at first, but it follows our plan exactly. Don't worry, we're about to break down the most important parts. First, the setup. We create our queue, our visited set, and our result variable. The queue is what drives the search, the visited set makes it efficient, and the result variable just holds on to the best answer we've found. Then we start the main while loop, which will run until we've explored every single reachable string. Inside the loop, we first handle the add operation. We convert the string to a list of characters to make it easy to change. Then we loop through just the odd indices, adding a sigis to each digit. The modulo 10 part is what makes it wrap around from 9 back to 0. Finally, we join the list back into a string, and here's the important part. We only add it to our queue if it's a string we've never seen before. Next, we handle the rotation. Python's string slicing makes this super clean. We take the last B characters and put them in front of the rest of the string. Just like before, if this rotated string is new to us, we add it to the visited set and the queue so we can explore from it later. So how fast is this? The performance depends entirely on how many unique strings we can actually create. Let's call this number of states S. For each state, we do a little bit of work that's proportional to the length of the string, nang, to create the new strings. So the time and space complexity are both roughly the number of states times the length of the string. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. It follows the exact same BFS logic with a queue and a visited set. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, it's the same fundamental BFS approach. Feel free to pause and review the code. So let's wrap it up. 
The biggest takeaway here is that when a problem lets you apply operations an unlimited number of times, you should immediately think about exploring states, like nodes in a graph. A breadth-first search is a perfect strategy for this, and using a visited set is the key to making sure your search is both correct and efficient. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the Playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click. Maybe subscribe for more or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.